Hi guys, as you can see I'm still at it, slowly. Uh, I've started working on some of the rock face, and that's actually what we're going to discuss shortly. Uh, because I don't want to work back there with the bridge up here once it's complete, I'm doing stuff there now. And as you can see I tend to put a little bit of green paint where I'm going to have my trees. Uh, it helps me visualize stuff and then I take more slices off with the, the hot wire as I go but the this is what I've done recently oh, there we go uh, I've gone back and painted these these were done differently these sections I don't know if you can see that yep uh, and I've redone these a bit to color match a little bit better and make them look more consistent what well, I'll show you what I've done before with it over there. Let's zoom in. Did the same thing over there, and it was more just to hide some of the pink. As you can see, there's still a tiny bit visible. Needs a little bit more work over there, but it's the same technique I used there. And I'll move around a bit. I did the same thing over here, but a little bit more carefully and on a larger scale. Um, just because, in my theory, you know, I'm a, not uh, a geologist or one of those rock people, whatever you call them, but uh, my general opinion is water wears rock down, makes it smoother, and leaves it bigger and craggier. Oh, there we go. Talking. Anyway, it's a simple technique, fairly fun if not therapeutic. And I'll zoom back out. Oh, wrong way. Sorry. There you go. It works on the foam. And by the way, I've got access so you can see. Hold on. That comes out. I'll be able to access this part. And then because most of that's hidden, I've left, I've created a big box. So it's really easy to get into the track back there. And Created a bit of a wedge here that fits in over top of the tunnel just to hold this in place. And then here, I've got a tooth. All I did was use uh, the hot, not the hot wire cutter, but the hot prong cutter to create a wedge shape. Then I've used some of these but broken off so they're short enough that went in. Just enough to come up to here, Sorry. only that much, so it didn't stick out past there. Put the wedge in to make up for the space that was lost, burned out by the cutter. Put my wedge back in there, drop of glue on top of it, plopped it in there until it dried, and it now locks it into place pretty nice and tight. There we go. So anyway. All I do to get this, which I like and for the effort I put in, not much, taking a sharp knife, or even a relatively dull one, and just slash the hell out of it, and go at it like it's your ex-wife's lawyer, and then take a flathead screwdriver or something similar, and just start gouging out some bigger channels. One place I do want to work on, especially, is the seams to make this one disappear. And this one will fit nicely. This will pretty much disappear. Because once this is done, I just put some paint over it. I've gone with black paint first to create some shadows. And then just start slopping on all sorts of different shades that you want. A couple of different shades of gray that are there now. Some beige. And I'll end up putting some more highlights on once I've got the whole thing done. But that's unpainted. And you can see, just, you know, I've got down there, already slashed up, waiting to be gouged out. Sometimes just use the back of the blade to get stuff out. And you can do it wider, which is what I did over on the river. Or you can do it fairly close and you got a nice 
craggy looking one because this is going to run from where it is over along about here oops, right, just over the tunnel and then down because uh, I've got a different angle here because this and the green part will be treed over and then what I like about this technique is it's just paint and the uh, this, the foam so I am going to put a tunnel down here and a track leading out abandoned up with a beat up wood uh, portal and when I'm ready to put that in I just take the hot poker not really hot wire one of these ones the hot poker heat it up stick it in and create an opening for behind the portal and I don't have to deal with plaster or anything like that that's what I did over on these ones these are all plaster on these sections and between the two I can't really see much of a difference especially once I've got some more uh, shading in there fade or blending them together it's going to look pretty much like one piece. I've got most of this seam disappeared. Not much I can do with that. Uh, I'll just put some small bushes or shrubs along there to hide the worst of it. And that should disappear. So that's how I'm doing my, uh, my rock walls or cliffs, whatever you want to call them. And you can change whatever colors you're using. I'm using gray tones or a gray scale. If you're doing the southwest or some place that calls for more of the tan and brown and whatever combinations rocks, just start with the darkest color you want. That way you're creating some undershadow. And uh, slop it on, dab it on, dry brush. Just keep going. It's only paint. And uh, one word of warning when it comes to this foam, you pretty much have to use acrylic. Uh, the main black one I used is the same black paint that I used for the foam edges and the framing which is uh, from Home Depot but for the rest of the stuff I'm just using cheap dollar store stuff that when I combine with white I can create as many different versions of gray as I want if you've got uh, an airbrush certainly you can airbrush it on your main coat rather than paint brushing it on because it is you gotta dab and everything else to get it everywhere to hide all of the pink don't try and use a, a rattle can spray paint uh, the not only are most of them enamels which will attack the foam but even if you do find an acrylic one the propellant that's used in those things will attack the foam so it'll just melt It'll move backwards on you, and you'll lose any sort of rockiness and cragginess. Uh, so, either brush on acrylic or spray on acrylic with an airbrush. Stay away from spray paints, it doesn't really work well with the foams. Unless you spray it from about 12 inches back or more, which indoors I don't want to do, it's just going to create even more pollution or stink in the air than if I was to spray it closer at the normal distance you, know, you get almost all of it on the surface and it still stinks around the area but if you spray it from further back you're just going to have more fumes and uh, particles in the air the other thing too with this technique you need a reasonable amount of foam behind it uh, like over here on this edge you have to do it very carefully don't you know go at it like you really want to hurt it uh, and you also have to keep in mind how much you have behind it like if I was to do up here you gotta be careful or you'll poke right through or just tear big chunks out here it's almost all solid it's a good minimum four inches of styrofoam behind it so you do need to take a little bit of care other than that it's fast, fun, and uh, cheap, and you do make a hell of a mess. It vacuums up just fine. Uh, and I'd rather
rather deal with that than deal with uh, hydrocal and uh, molds mold releases and all that stuff and waiting for it to dry and I'll end up doing another video shortly on how I uh, deal with sculpt a mold for my actual ground because uh, I pre-tint it and it saves a little time but I'll get to that in another video when I'm doing that anyway take care